the leads from Connorsville's production of Les Mis. How about you tell me who you are, what grade you're in, and the role that you're playing? I'm Parker Cart. I play Jean Valjean in this role. Uh, I have been in musicals since junior high, so seventh grade, all up until now. I've also done a couple shows at the Guyer Theater, and those are the musicals that I've been in. My name is Bobby McLucky. Uh, I play Javert in the musical. I'm a junior, and I've also been in shows since seventh grade, so this is my fifth show. Um, I'm Sydney Daly, and I'm Little Cassette, and I've done musicals since my seventh grade year, too. So. so, from what I understand, this show is kind of in two parts, right? There's Little Cosette, then there's an older Cosette, but you two, you two are constant throughout both sets. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about your characters? So, this Les Mis is the story of Jean Valjean, who was an ex-con. He was in prison for stealing a loaf of bread and breaking a window pane for about 19 years, and he tried to run away, so that added an extra five. Um, and eventually, whenever he got his yellow ticket of leave, he could not get a job, could not get work anywhere because no one would hire him because he was a criminal. So fast forward a little bit, uh, he changes his name, and he becomes the mayor of a town. And then when Javert recognizes him, he runs away again to Paris. And that brings us into sort of the older cassette, the revolution, um, and such. So, Javert, you, you have it out for him. You don't like him. Right. Why? What's your deal? Well, it's not really that Javert is that bad of a guy, I don't think. It's just that he's so dedicated to the law and his job that he just feels it's his duty to capture Jean Valjean. And that's what he's dedicating his entire life to. And you guys have a pretty big confrontation scene, correct? Have you blocked that yet? Yeah, yes? H how's it going? Tell me about that. It's going good. It's a lot of fun to do, so, yeah. Okay, awesome. So, little Cosette, you're in the first half. What is your connection to these characters? Okay, so, um, I'm, my mother can't, like, take care of me and support me, so I was given to, like, the Thenardiers, and, um, my mom, it, she, like, passes away and stuff like that, and Jean Valjean, ta like, takes, takes me and, like, saves me from everyone. So as far as you know, he's your father. Well, not, not really, because at the end I sort of tell her that her mother gave her life for you and such. But my understanding is that she never actually knew her real father. So these Tenardiers, these people that took care of you, are they good people? Are they bad people? No, they weren't. They're not good people. They're I am here with two of the leads from Connorsville's production of Les Mis. Hello. Tell me your names, tell me your characters, how long you've been doing musical theater, how many shows you've been in. Hi, my name's Riley Artis. I am a sophomore in high school and I'll be playing Cosette. Um, I've been doing theater since I was a little kid, but this is my first musical at Collinsville. Yeah. Hi, I'm Josh Brady. I'll be playing Marius and I'm a junior. And I've been doing shows at the junior high, since the junior high 7th grade and I've been doing them every year since. Alright, so... Older Cosette and Marius. Tell me about your characters. Well, Marius is um, a school kid. He's in university right now, but he and his friends are getting together because they're not happy with how Fran the state France is in. So they're start trying to start up a revolution. But right towards the beginning of it, he runs into Cosette, and the two kind of fall in love. 
Yeah, like Cosette's a classic case of rags to riches. And um, whenever Valjean took her in, she was like taken to like a nunnery school and uh, she was like taught to never fall in love with a boy so when she first met Mary she was very indecisive and obviously very shy but like as she like kind of talks to him more she gets more and more like confident in herself and like falls more and more in love and it's just adorable <laughs> so you guys are pretty young in the show right I mean yeah. young teenagers older te oh okay so not quite as young as I thought early 20s so this is a case of like first love Yes. Okay, so tell me how that all happened. How do your characters meet? It's kind of at a revolution rally towards the end. I accidentally bump into her and our eyes just meet and he, it's just love at first sight, I guess. And I understand there's a bit of a, uh, a love triangle with another character. Is that correct? Do you know this other character? Um, I mean, I knew her when I was a child, but like... I don't really exactly remember remember her that much because like I was never holding a grudge against her I guess because I was never like kind of like having a conversation like I know you you never did anything when your mother abused me I see and what's your relationship with this other character uh, we've been friends for a long time and the thing is that she like takes a liking for me but I've always just seen her as like a sister and as a friend and it's kind of Bl I'm kind of blind to it. I am here with Cassie, who is one of the co-technical directors. That's a pretty big title. So what do you do? What's your job? So as co-technical director, we go through the script and we figure out how to design all the sets, figure out what all we need out here for our students. We design everything, we build everything, we do the sound and the lighting, and we build everything, and we call the show, and we make sure it all works. That's a lot. A lot. But you split it with someone else. So your expertise is more in calling the show. What all does that entail? So I get the script from the very beginning, and I run through it with our director, Michelle Harbaugh, and I sit in the back in the control room with the lighting. We have a student who does the lighting and we have the students who do the sound back there. And I sit there with my headset on and I go through the script, every single line, I read the music and I call the lights and when the drops come down and when the sets go out and I just tell everybody what to do so they know when to do it. So this show is a little bit different because it's technically an opera which means it's all music. So as you said, you read music. So is this show a bit more difficult? Why is that? It's really hard, just like Phantom last year, uh, because there are no scene changes, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain a little bit, but when you have typical musicals, you have the scene ends and then we have like this minute where everything can kind of change but with things like Phantom and Les Mis you just have to keep going and so there's never any stopping it's just you got to figure out where this person can go so we can put a little scene over here and you have to figure out where this person's going to go and who's going to sing that I mean it's just it never ends so it makes it really difficult because there's no breaks how many years have you been doing this oh that's a good question so I started helping with set crew when I was in high school and that was back in 06, 07, I graduated 08. Um, and then I took a few years off when I had to go to college and then I came back for Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with Henry. And, um, and I've been doing it ever since. So I officially became technical director for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So you're basically a professional. You've got this, you've got this down. Oh no, I think so. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Les Miserables, the world's most popular musical, is coming to Connellsville. This breathtaking production has left audiences awestruck. Ah, look down, look down, don't look them in Experience the Experience the musical phenomenon. Les Miserables. Connellsville Area High School, February 28th through March 3rd. Tickets go on sale February 5th. I am here at California Area High School with the director, John Rolfe, of their production of James and the Giant Peach. Hello, John. Hey there. So, James and the Giant Peach. I remember the book and the story from when I was a child. 
Why'd you pick the show? Well, uh, it's uh, it's kind of interesting, actually. You know, this is my first year directing at California, and uh, I was looking at, you know, what do we have in terms of talent? What do I, what what can I bring that's a little bit different than maybe what has happened to California before? And um, a couple of things that stood out to me was uh, I, when I was in college, I had a really great professor, Monica Payne, uh, and she taught this this class on devised theater and kind of building theater out of out of nothing. Right. And uh, I was looking at it and, you know, a lot of the talent that we had previously at California had graduated and I was, you know, figuring out the talent here uh, almost kind of with fresh eyes. And, uh, and I, I was figuring, you know, a show where we can build what the characters are, we can build what the scenery will be, we can build it uh, kind of with the kids. Uh, James and the Giant Peach stood out to me because it's kind of an open book. Um, so, uh, you know, I was looking at it, we have a bare stage, let the kids kind of build it, uh, put their, create their characters out of what they experience and what they, uh, they see throughout history. We've been doing a lot of, uh, research on, you know, Britain and some of their figureheads and, uh, kind of just, I, I thought it was a great opportunity to build something. So you're really creating your own atmosphere, your own show from the ground up with this. Right. That's wonderful. So give me a little recap. What is the story? Okay. Uh, the story is about uh, uh, a young boy. His name's James. Uh, he's been recently orphaned. His parents uh, were eaten by a rhino uh, that escaped from the zoo. And he's, he's thrust into a, a situation that uh, he didn't choose. So his, uh, his, his, it's kind of a coming of age story. He's growing up, he's learning uh, what his own agency is for himself. Uh, and he comes across a uh, kind of almost like a, like a wizard who uh, offers him an opportunity to make his own life uh, because he's been uh, kind of foss being foster raised by these two awful women who, are, who say they're his aunts. Uh, and uh, and he, he uses this magic and it kind of goes beyond his own control. And then he's, you know, the story's about him learning how to reel it all back in uh, and find his own family and make his own decisions. Lovely. Thank you. So you said this is your first year directing at California High School, but you've been directing for a few years. I've seen some of your shows in Connellsville. Tell me about that. What's your journey? Um, well, I, I, uh, my senior year at Point Park, I, had, I graduated with a musical theater degree, and uh, I realized that, you know, I'm not, I'm not a dancer, uh, but I like to be creative so I took a lot of directing classes um, specifically in musical theater and, and devised work and as, as in building theater and uh, that kind of started a, a passion for me and uh, after college I, I worked at uh, Brownsville Area High School on a couple of their musicals and uh, worked at the Geyer in uh, the Geyer Theater in Scottsdale um, and then I've just kind of been putting together a resume of, of shows that uh, uh, musicals uh, as a director um, and it, it's just kind of been one leaning into the next leaning into the next kind of creating relationships going along the way um, uh, like for instance last year I, I worked on the production here Little Mermaid as the assistant director um, and I moved up as the director la uh, from last year she got a job at a different school district so you know that's kind of what's got me here uh, it's just kind of been one leading into the next which is pretty fun Oh, I totally understand that. Trust me. Well, John, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I am here with two of the leads at California Area High School's production of James and the Giant Peach. So, tell me your names. Tell me how many productions you've been in. Who are you in the show? I'm Kai. I'm in eighth grade, and I've been in two productions here before this, um, a few other places, and I'm James. My name's Raquel, I'm in 10th grade. This is my third production here, but I've done productions prior to this at Cal U. Awesome, so tell me a little bit about your characters. You are the lead guy. You're the name of the show, and you're kind of like a wizard. Tell me a little bit about that. 
So James is an orphan boy. He lost his parents at a very young age and he's in an orphanage. But then they just found his family who are two aunts and when he's put to them, given to them, they're very abusive and he um, needs to escape. And he gets the help of Laudalord to um, cast this magic spell, which is supposed to be for him, but it actually goes into a peach and a bunch of insects, which allows him to escape and go on this um, adventure. And they eventually end up in New York City and they live together in the peach pit and have a wonderful family. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this wizard. So I'm Laudalord. I come across this book and I bring it to James because I see he's in need and I kind of give him an option of what spell he would like to use but of course he said he ends up misusing it and throughout the show I kind of am I guess you could say controlling people because I am a magical person. So do you stay in the peach the entire time or do you do you end up back into the real world? Yes, we do. At the end, the peach actually goes across the ocean. We start in Brit in Great Britain and we can't we do sometimes like go up onto the top of the peach and the peach does fly in the sky because it gets attached to seagulls. Um, it lands on the spot on the tip of the Empire State Building, then falls off crushing my two aunts. Um, killing them, which is nice. Um, and then, basically, we do live in the real world. The peach pit is just our, like, like our house at the end. And do you help them come back to the real world? It's sort of, uh, I'd say they kind of figure out things on their own. But I'm more of a help n near the beginning, starting it all off. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, and have a great show. I am here with two lovely ladies that really bring this show to life. They are the choreographers of James and the Giant Peach. We have Lori and Hannah. So, Lori, tell me about the dancing. How do you go about creating all of these numbers? Well, I've been dancing for quite a few years, and I have been choreographing for quite a few years, not on the theater stage, but in the dance and competition world. Recently, probably in the last five years, I started choreographing here at California for the annual plays. I also did Brownsville areas this year, and I did one with um, John Rolfe in Connellsville. So I'm getting a little more experience later on in life, but it's a lot of fun. It's all about fun. It's about bringing these kids into a world that they've never done before. Trying new things. <laughs> Sometimes they're a little scary, <laughs> but we want to have fun. We want to take them out of their comfort zone, let them try something different, and just the camaraderie here is fabulous. The kids are great. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I saw a couple of gymnastics flips going on <laughs> when I first walked in. It's amazing. So tell me about you. You went to this high school, yes? yes? Um, and now you're kind of taking things over and you're helping create these numbers. Tell me your journey. Well, I started out dancing at Machetas and that's where I met Lori and I was two when I started and I've been with her ever since. And um, I helped her out when I was here in high school and then after that she just asked me to assist in some of her journey. So now I'm here again. <laughs> <laughs> this show, from what I've heard, it seems very magical. Does that come into play whenever you're figuring out all these, these dance numbers? We try to bring the mood. The mood and the, the atmosphere and the feeling that these characters would have in the dance moves. Absolutely. We try to, you know, we're talking through our movement. Amazing. So, ticket sales. Tell me, how do I get tickets? When is the show? You can... Uh, Keep a lookout on the school website. The show is March 8th, 9th, and 10th. And that's about it. Well, All right. Um, awesome. Well, everyone, have an amazing show, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Come see the show. I am here at Guyville Catholic High School, and I am with the man that makes all of this happen. This is Mr. Nick Bell. Hi, Chelsea. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? So, I wanted to ask you, as I said, you're the man that makes this all happen. So, what exactly do you do in these productions? What are you in charge of? Well, I'm the producer of the show, and I'm also the music director of the show, so I get to do pretty much everything. 
The only thing I don't do is choreograph the show. Right, which is why we have John. Yes, and so you're, you're stage directing, and I know you also conduct the shows, correct? So what's it like being up there at the podium, kind of conducting everything and giving all those cues? Well, I love it because I know everything that's going on in the music. I know all the cues backstage, so I have the headset on, and I'm talking to people backstage, and I'm giving cues to the pit, and I just know every little thing about the show, and it makes me feel more comfortable. I totally understand that. But how do you do it? How do you multitask all of that? You just got to focus. I go and I'll pace before the show and get all my focus going in through my brain and just think all my cues through and hope it all comes together. And it usually does. Oh, absolutely. You always have a wonderful production. You're welcome. So this year's musical is Mamma Mia. And this is based off of the music of ABBA, which I think most people love ABBA. How can you not? So my question to you is, why Mamma Mia this year? Mamma Mia is a show I've wanted to do for 20 years. It's one of my favorite shows for the past 20 years. I've waited all this time for the rights to come out, and I always said when the rights would come out, if I had the right cast coming back, I would do it. Back in April, the cast or the, the rights got released. I applied for a license, and within an hour, I had it and signed a contract. So I knew I had to cast for it, and I'm glad I picked it. So you are ready. That's very exciting. It's exciting, too, because this is the 20th show I'll be doing at Guybo, and I've waited 20 years to do this show. So I get to do this one for that show. That's wonderful. Congratulations. So tell us, give us a little, little intro on what this show is about. The show is about a girl named Sophie who has three possible dads, and she invites them all to her wedding, and all three show up. And then the fun begins. Because yes. her mom doesn't know they were invited, and her mom is not happy with that at first. Lovely. And as I said, this all centers around the music of ABBA. So roughly how many songs would you say from their albums? There is probably about 21 or 22 songs in the show, including Super Trooper, Dancing Queen, The Winner Takes It All, Waterloo is done at the end, I Have a Dream, and of course the, the theme song, Mamma Mia. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm here with Emma, and she is the costume director for the production of Mamma Mia. Emma, tell me a little bit about what you do, how many productions you've done, how long you've been here. So my mother and I are co-costume directors um, with my older sister for this show. We've done about 9, 10 local high school productions and worked with a variety of ages and different types of shows. Um, through a wide genre, I guess you could say, of musical theater. And what we do is we take all the castmates and go ahead and fit them for costumes and place them in things that go with their character, their the type of show, and um, whatever their classification is within the show and help fit them so they look the part. Wonderful. Do you create some of these costumes from scratch? Are you pulling them from an inventory somewhere? We make almost everything um, from scratch go and buy the fabric, buy the patterns, other things we are able to buy, but the cost of fabric is so expensive that sometimes it is just cheaper to buy it, but everything we do make. And how long does it typically make, uh, how, and how long does it typically take you to make these costumes? One piece can take anywhere from, you know, a day putting in eight hours. Um, one costume we made for Phantom of the Opera um, took 36 hours to make. So it definitely, it varies on the costume and the detail work on it, but every costume is highly detailed and every single thing that could possibly go into it, every thought goes into that costume. And as far as the aesthetic for this show, are you following the time era or are you giving it a modern spin? We definitely follow what the original creators of the show had in mind and definitely take notice of what ABBA and the creative team that put the production on Broadway um, but we do follow historically you know with the time what time period the show is set in the location um, what has been seen in current movies and what has been done in productions all around the world so we take a wide variety and kind of build ourselves a bible as you could say to really get the best feel for what the show should be wonderful you really seem like you know what you're doing this is great thank you so much I'm here with John Wagner. He is the choreographer for the 2019 production of Mamma Mia here at Guybo High School. So tell me about your vision, your process. Well, um, I just wanted this to be a fun show for the kids. Um, this is all obviously ABBA music, um, so I think it's something that their parents all grew up with. Um, so 
I want it to be fun for them, but also something for the parents to like reflect upon. Um, so it's very much based on like those old moves um, that ABBA did, um, and then just bringing it into modern day. So. Are you an ABBA fan? Do you like the music yourself? Of course I am, yes. Who doesn't like ABBA, right? So as you can see, we're dealing with a lot of chorus members, a lot of people in this cast. So what's your process in putting together these big chorus numbers? Yeah, so there are a lot of kids in all of these numbers, um, a lot of moving pieces. So I start at the beginning um, and I give myself a strict timeline and say I have to get this done on this day. Um, especially with this show because there's a ton of music and they're moving throughout the entire show. Um, so I like a typical number like this probably takes two, three hour rehearsals to set. Um, and then we need to get into cleaning rehearsals and finessing everything and making it look uh, performance ready. That is a lot. So how many numbers like this do you have to choreograph in the entire show? We have about 10 like this, and then there are like three or four smaller numbers where there are like three or four people in them. So it's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Thank you. I am here with the dance captains of Geibel's production of Mamma Mia. So tell me your names, your age, and what grade you're in. Um, my name is Lauren. I'm 17, and I'm a senior this year. I'm Sarah, I'm 17, and I'm also a senior. So, how many productions have you been in here? I've been in all four productions. For I've also been in all four. Awesome. So, dance captain, what are your responsibilities? Um, usually, like, when John's not here, we take over practices and go over dances and clean everything up for him. We also just, like, help everyone if they need help or if they're confused, we just help them out and everything. So you guys have to know and remember all the choreography. Do you, guys, do you write it down? Do you record? Or, or do you just remember them? Um, some stuff is written down, but mostly just remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also record sometimes, but mm -hmm. mainly we just remember all of it. I would imagine recording would be super... I, I would need a recording. Absolutely. So... Is this your first year as dance captain, or have you guys done this before? Um, last year we were assistant dance captains to the seniors. Okay, awesome. So I'm assuming you're both dancers, yeah. correct? All right, tell me where you guys dance, how long you've been doing it. Um, I've been dancing for 16 years at Hauk Dance Studio in Uniontown. I've also been dancing for 16 years at Hauk Dance Studio. Awesome, so you guys really know each other. That, I'm sure that helps with working things out. Yeah. Wonderful, so my last question for you. Mamma Mia. Did you guys know the show before it was announced? Did you know the music? Do you even, do you like the show? Yeah? So let me know. Yeah, Mamma Mia is definitely my favorite musical. So I'm really excited we got to do it this year. Yeah, it's very exciting. And Mr. Bell's been wanting to do it for a really long time. So the atmosphere is just really exciting and we're all just excited. And the music of ABBA. Do you guys know who ABBA is? Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. All right, I am here with the four female leads of Geibel's production of Mamma Mia. So I'm going to start with you. I'm going to have you all tell me your names, your age, what grade you're in, and how about you throw in how many productions you've been in here at Geibel. Um, my name is Mary Bahanna. I'm 18. I'm a senior here at Geibel, and I've been in all four shows so far at Geibel. My name is Maureen Motiki. I'm 16, I'm a junior, and I've been in two previous shows at Geibel. My name is Echo Schaefer. I'm 16, I'm also a junior, and I've been in three ch shows at Geibel. Um, I'm Nina Alvarez. I'm 18, and I'm a senior at Geibel, and this is my fourth production with Geibel. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so my next question. Who are you guys in the show? Well, I'm Aunt Rosie, and um, my best friends are Tanya and Donna over there. I'm, Ta I'm Tanya, yeah. And <laughs> I'm Sophie Sheridan. I'm her daughter, and they're my aunts. Okay. <laughs> I'm Donna Sheridan, which those are my gal pals and my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> they're not actually your aunts, right? You just call them that. Yes. Yes. Okay, fair enough. So here's my next question. How are you guys all related in this show? You kind of touched that. So you guys are a girl group? Yes. You're her daughter? Explain to me a little bit more. Who wants to take it over? Um, okay. I don't even... <laughs> but um, they're just my besties, I'm guessing, for my whole life. Like, we've been pretty tight. And then this is my daughter, and they helped, like, 
with the whole raising of her mm -hmm. stuff. They're great. Yeah. So in this show, they helped you raise your daughter because why? The the father figure isn't in the picture. Okay. And that's, that's kind of what the show is about, mm -hmm. correct? You are searching for your father a bit? How does that all come about? Well, I'm getting married, okay. and I want my father to walk me down the aisle, and I found her diary, which has, ev like, the people she slept with <laughs> when she conceived me. And I don't know who it is. <laughs> well, Mom, that's a little awkward. <laughs> okay, next question. And this is for you three. ABBA, they were like a real girl group. There are three of you, which means there are three voice parts. Who sings the top? Who sings the middle? Who sings the bottom harmony? And what was it like learning all these parts? Um, specifically, I play, I mean, I sing the top, and I, last year, had to sing only the bottom. So it's been a, a large transition for me. <laughs> I'm the middle harmony, and it's been a lot of fun to learn, but it's also very challenging. But I think by March, we'll have it down pat. Oh, absolutely. I've always found that the middle harmony is the hardest, so good for you. I sing the bottom, and just to like hear us put all the parts together so far, everything's sounding really, really good so far. That's great. Hmm. Ah, so how did you feel when... It was announced that Mamma Mia was the musical. Did you know the musical? Were you super excited? Do you guys even know who ABBA is? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Why wouldn't we know who ABBA was? There, yeah, I think it was just an occasion. I'll just say it. Like, there was an announcement at school, and everyone knew that something crazy was going to happen. <laughs> like, so early. It was like a super early announcement. He announced it, like, literally last school year. Yeah. yeah, he was so excited. Was He's been waiting to do the show for like 20 years. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. We were all so excited to find out the parts and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really exciting because, like they said, it happened, like, I think May of last year. And, like, it was early in the morning. I, and that really just woke everybody up, I think, and got us in, like, a great mood for the day. So the general consensus is you guys love the show. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I am here with the four male leads of Garble's production of Mamma Mia. Guys, tell me who you are. Give me your names, your age, what grade you're in, how many musicals you've done here. I'll start with you. I'm Cole Kendall. I'm 16. I've been in two of the musicals and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Ryan Resco. I'm 17. I'm a junior and this is my third show. I'm Isaiah Krisner. I'm 16. I'm also a junior and this is also my third show. I'm Dylan Graham. I'm 17 years old. I'm a junior, and I've been two shows. Awesome. Okay. Tell me your characters. I don't really know the male characters, so give me the details. Uh, I'm Sky, who is Sophie's boyfriend, and in the musical, we're getting married. Oh, fancy. I'm Sam. I'm one of the dads that had the actual relationship with Donna, and so we have a... Um, past, like a more emotional past. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Donna is Sophie's mother. Yes. Okay. I'm Bill. I'm one of Sophie's potential dads. So I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Harry, and I'm one of Sophie's dads, or well, potential dads. And uh, like me and Donna and I's like relationship wasn't like a long relationship. It was just kind of like the spur of the moment. But I over time I had feelings for her and like my feelings stuck with me throughout the whole time of you know Sophie being born and then us reuniting as you know one big group and almost like a family. So, so your characters may be a little more invested in all this this whole process? Um, I wouldn't say entirely invested just emotionally invested but He's, he's just there to see Donna. He doesn't know he has a daughter. He doesn't know about his, you know, Sophie that, you know, she could be his, his daughter or that these two could also be their dad, her dad. So that kind of segues me into the next question. How are 
all of your characters related? Do you have interactions together in the show? I mean, are you guys cool with each other or are you not cool with each other? Let's start with you. Um, I'm just kind of the boyfriend, so like, <laughs> I, I didn't even know that they were coming until like part of the show where she told me, oh hey, I invited my dads. And dads. Dads. <laughs> okay. And I wasn't very happy about that at the time. So for the three dads, we actually enter the show at the same time. And so we don't really know why we're here, but then we're all, we just introduced to each other, not really know, knowing why we are all invited. So we become like, we become like, throughout the whole show, it's like we become the best friends that like lifetime best friends, but we've only known each other for like a couple of days. So it's kind of cool how we just like, we get so close in a short amount of time. So, so it's a nice little bromance that unfolds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, do we find out at the end which one is the father? Don't tell me. No. We don't. No. Nothing at all. Never. Like, they hint at stuff throughout the show, but there's, like, hints at everyone, so you're still really confused at the end. And then, at the end of the show, you know, if you haven't seen the show, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a, it's a really good compromise on the whole situation. And it's like a very good resolution. So, and it's just, it's nice to see it unfold throughout the show. I totally agree. Okay. <laughs> so, you mainly have solos, right? Or maybe a couple duets with Sophie. Yeah, I have like one main song. One main song. Yeah. So, you don't have to worry about harmonies? No. <laughs> but you three guys. And you three guys, you sing songs together? Yeah. One song together, like together, together. And two two songs, technically, but one song, like together, harmonizing really. Okay. So that was my question: harmonies. Who's singing the top, the middle, and the bottom harmony? I'm usually at the top, and then it would go Dylan, and then Isaiah, the lowest. So you're singing the bottom. The bottom. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm right in the middle, in between. Ooh, the middle harmony is the worst. <laughs> Are you guys used to singing harmonies, or is this new territory? It's relatively new, it's yeah. Relatively new for me, like crazy. Like it's like it's a challenge. I feel like, but I feel like it's a challenge that the three of us can, you know, work it out, and it'll be fine in the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. All right. Final question. When Mamma Mia was announced, did you guys know the show? I mean, were you super excited? Did you know the music of ABBA? Were you familiar with that stuff? Yeah. It was, I was excited personally. I, I knew before it was announced, I knew it was going to be Mamma Mia, especially when it was released, like to be licensed. I remember I was called out of class and I was brought to Mr. Bell's room. I was like, what's going on? And they showed me the computer screen and it showed online that it can be released for licensing. And I was like, we're doing Mamma Mia. I was like, don't even try and play around Mr. Bell. We all know. Uh, I already knew the music, and I had heard rumors of us doing the show, so I was kind of excited because I already knew what to expect, and like I knew the songs. Mm -hmm. How about you two? Uh, I didn't know the music, never saw the movie, never seen the show, so when I found out, I was like, whatever, you know. <laughs> well, do you like it now? Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, when it was announced, like, it was just going through my head, the movie, like, not the actual show, and like, the actual, like, storyline it was just like parts of the movie and i was thinking of like the different characters and i was like i was thinking like yeah it's a cool musical and i'm gonna be in it for sure but until i really like went for my callback audition seeing that i was gonna get like possibly a role in like a lead of like a big lead or something um that's when i started to get really excited about it and then once i got casted as harry then i was like it was like 100 percent full throttle you know yeah Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. You're going to have a great show. Congrats. When is the show, and how do we get tickets? Okay, the show is on March 29th, 30th, and 31st. 7 p.m. show is on March 29th and 30th. And on the 31st, we have our matinee at 2 o'clock. All seats are $10. All seats are reserved, and you can get the tickets at the State Theater beginning on February 12th. <laughs> I am here at 
Southmoreland High School. I am talking to Michelle Zamparini. She's the director. And Charles Lowry, who is the choreographer. And your production this year, your second ever production, is The Little Mermaid. So, Michelle, yes. why The Little Mermaid? Chelsea, why not The Little Mermaid? Our first show was Cinderella, and uh, we love Disney. We have many wonderful memories of Disney, so we thought we're going to keep that magic going and do a second Disney show. I love it. Disney is always the answer, for sure. So how has your process been as far as stage directing? Have you done this before? Is this your second time stage directing, or have you done other shows in the past? We have had a play here the last several years, and we kind of really watched that grow. The kids really set the pace to get ready for a musical. So I co-directed the play here for several years and kind of dipped my toe in those waters. And I had done some choreography back in the day in my younger years. So I've always just had a love for the stage. Awesome. Thank you. So Charles, hello. So lovely to see you. Did you choreograph their show last year? Yes, I did. So these are familiar faces to you. You know these kids. Yes, and they're a great group of kids. So the Little Mermaid, we go from being humans to creatures under the sea. How do you handle setting that up on stage with the dance? Well, we really are diving under the sea. Um, we just really try to implement like our arms and our motions to make us look more fishy. Fishy. Okay. So do we have any cool stunts and turns and, you know, how do you differentiate the human world from the under the sea world? So we try to like implement like lifts with the guys and the girls to make them look like they're swimming. And we do a, a lot of different relays and a lot of different levels to make it look like they're like schools of fish traveling on stage and off stage. So would you say this show, as far as the dance is concerned, is a little more complicated than last year? I would definitely say so, because last year was more of like the classical waltz. And this year we're doing, you know, more jazz funk and jazz and more like hard hitting. Very cool. I'm excited to see this. Thank you so much, you two. I'm here at Southmoreland High School with two of the leads for the production of The Little Mermaid. So ladies, tell me your names, tell me what role you're playing and what grade you're in. My name is Emily White and I'm playing Ariel in The Little Mermaid and I'm in 10th grade. I'm Michaela Harvey, I'm in 10th grade and I'm also playing Ariel. <laughs> So you're both Ariel. Amazing. I love The Little Mermaid. It was my favorite movie growing up. So tell me a little bit about your experience playing the role of Ariel. Ever since I knew that it was The Little Mermaid, I will be completely honest with you, at the reveal for the musical, I cried. <laughs> I was so excited. Little Mermaid has been one of my favorite musicals and Disney movies in general ever since I was a little kid. And it was also been like a secret dream of mine to play Ariel. It was like it was always something so mysterious and mystical that I always wanted to know what it was like. And now I'm finally getting that opportunity and it's a once in a lifetime and I'm so, so like lucky. To amazing, thank you. And how about for you? It's been a really, really amazing experience. I've actually been in The Little Mermaid before, but I didn't get a big lead. And so it's been amazing to be part of this. It's such a powerful character. So when you get to sing part of your world, all of the emotions come to you and it's just really, really special. So do either of you have a favorite song that you sing? Um, the quartet is really beautiful. I like that we all come together and the harmonies are really pretty, but part of your world is definitely amazing and like you feel the rush of it when you do it, so. And how about for you? Um, I'd have to say the quartet as well because like it's just, it tells so many stories in one song that it's, you just feel all of the emotion just come in a rush. Every single time that I listen to it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I love this. I can't wait to bring it to the stage. And Part of Your World is obviously a classic. But I, I actually like the reprise because it's a part where Ariel's belt really comes out and it's just this rush of, once again, like the emotion of it all. So, Could you tell me the dates of the show and can you tell me what days you will be playing the role? Um, we actually don't know what days we have yet, so that's not been revealed yet. It'll be revealed right before we get the, like, right before the tickets go on sale, but 
The show dates are the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. Saying thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. thank you. I'm here with the student directors for the production of The Little Mermaid. Guys, why don't you tell me your names, what grade you're in, and tell me if you've ever student directed before. Uh, hi, I'm Aaron Polakowski. I'm a senior, and uh, I've student directed all four years of high school. Hi, my name's Colin Sherbondi. I'm a senior, and I've student directed this year and last year. I'm Regan Lewandowski. I'm a sophomore, and I've never student directed before. Oh, very cool. First time. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your responsibilities and what the experience has been like student directing this show. Uh, well, we all have uh, separate responsibilities because we all have technical different assignments. Uh, my responsibility mostly is to run around and do just little things for our production, like making copies and doing attendance, getting all of the forms that we need categorized, given out, and organized. And my job is more so focusing and making sure that everybody is doing something when they're just like hanging around, just making sure that everybody's running lines. They could be doing something when they're just like hanging around. And anything that happens behind stage, I usually just help to make sure that's going along smoothly. Great. Um, I kind of just fit in wherever they need me and I actually help do like the advertising book and like our big program book. I'm working on that right now and um, yeah, just going with them. Amazing. Well, guys, thank you so very much for your time. Have an awesome show. I'm here with the male leads of the production of The Little Mermaid. Guys, I'm going to go down the line. Tell me your names, your grade, and the role that you're playing. Uh, I'm Josiah Yitzi. I'm in 12th grade, and I'm Prince Eric. I'm Cole Lazier. I'm a senior, and I am Sebastian. I'm Dylan Opolinski. I'm also a senior, and I play the role of King Triton. I'm Alex Kramer. I'm a junior, and I play the role of Grimsby. I'm Dakota Kaufman. I'm a senior, and I'm playing the role of Scuttle. Okay, these are awesome roles. I'm super excited to talk to you guys. I want to talk to you first, though. Scuttle, I saw you were wearing tap shoes. Yeah. Tell me about that. So um, the song that I have, Positivity, is really, um, it's the song like where Ariel just got her legs. She doesn't know how to walk yet, so... I'm trying to keep an up, upbeat attitude and teach her how to walk with them. So we're teaching her, like me and the other seagulls are teaching her through tap dance. And it's like the big tap number in the show. So I had to learn how to tap from no experience whatsoever. And how's that been going? Uh, my legs hurt a lot, but <laughs> I, I'm getting somewhere, I think. Good, good. So tell me a bit about your character. Uh, I'm Grimsby. He's the... Uh, old guy he <laughs> takes care of prince eric uh, he's the voice of reason kind of a little bit he's still nuts <laughs> <laughs> and you are ariel's dad you're a little scary yeah tell me about that um so like whenever we were going through the uh the read through of the script most of the dialogue that i have with ariel is either uh like me being angry with her uh or like just trying to find her. And it's sort of like, like my director said that the, the role of uh, the father-daughter relationship is the heart of The Little Mermaid. But from my point of view, it's just me, you know, just being angry at her until the, until the end. So it's sort of a, an odd experience. And Sebastian, you're like, you're the cool dude. Yeah. But you're also, you worry a lot. I do, I get to talk in a, a cool Jamaican accent though. And uh, you know, I've been practicing it uh, a little bit, and I have the big number, you know, under the sea. It's kind of nerve-wracking because everybody knows that number. Um, so you really got to get it down right because everybody in the crowd's going to, they've heard it, they know the words, and it's going to be a, a pretty big experience. So, Prince Eric, you're the love interest. So, have you played a love interest before? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is a brand new experience. So how's it been going? It's been going pretty good. I got to say, like. And how do you do you sing at all in this show? I sing a lot. Ah, <laughs> I have three songs. Nice. And do you have any duets with Ariel? I don't have. I I have a duet, but it's like it's only me singing because she can't speak. Right. But then there is a quartet with me, Ariel. Um, Trident and Sebastian. Nice. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. It was lovely talking to you. 
have an amazing show. Thank you. I'm here with the three ladies that play the villains in The Little Mermaid. So girls, tell me your name, your grade, and what role you play. My name is Chloe Gillot. I'm a sophomore, and I will be playing the role of Ursula. My name's Morgan Brown. I'm a senior here at Southmoreland, and I play the role of Jetsam. My name is Madison Garlowich. I am a junior, and I'm playing the role of Flotsam. Jetsam and Flotsam? Am yeah. I correct? So you guys are like the eels, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's it like being one of Ursula's minions? I think it's really cool, especially because I know her outside of the musical as well. But we're almost like one character split into two. So we're like one entity. So I think it's really cool that we get to like interact in that way. So... I personally think it's fun being an evil character because you can be more manipulative and more like just creepy to the main characters. So I always like the evil characters. They're way more fun. <laughs> so you're Ursula. You are the main sea witch. Tell me about that. What's it like? It's a really fun opportunity to like do and be able to be her. And it's like really of a good challenge for me to become and grow as an actor because like playing a like a princess like you have like the glitz and the glam and then being coming that villain you got to be like what would she do what would like how would you react like how would you be it mm -hmm. so how's poor unfortunate souls is it fun yeah. i feel like it would be so much fun yeah it is a lot of fun there's also another song daddy's little angel and it like goes into depth like of ursula like how she was as a child and it's like really nice like ex explanation about it but poor unfortunate souls is like one of my favorite songs <laughs> this thing awesome ladies thank you so much have an awesome show i'm here with the acting coach as well as the stage manager and director <laughs> and a lot of other things for the production of the little mermaid tell me about yourself tell me your role in this production Hi, um, my name is Mandy Onder. I am the acting coach and the stage manager uh, for The Little Mermaid with Southmoreland. Um, I'm actually an alumni of Southmoreland and um, I work for the Geyer in Scottsdale. Um, and I'm able to come here and work with the kids uh, once or twice a week. Um, it's really exciting to be back here at Southmoreland, also very strange at the same time. Um, and getting to share my passions, because um, acting, one of my main passions, um, and getting to, you know, fuel the kids with my energy because my energy is contained. Um, so yes, I'm wearing many hats here. It's very exciting, lots of fun. So tell me about this whole acting process. What do you do with the kids? How do you get them into character? Well, first I start with focusing, focusing our energy because they are high school students. Um, they have lots of things going on, so it's really hard to get them to focus. Um, musical is, we try and make it just as important as the other things, but you know at the end of the day that school comes first. Um, so getting them focused and then really talking about the development of the characters. Um, you know, that they are high school students, so talking about the, you know, the real relationships between the characters and um, the peaks and valleys, um, the arc of emotion. Uh, one of the things with the villains we're talking about is, um, you know, Ursula's deep growl versus her high pitched um, and the, val the, the peak of that. So um, just helping them to explore those and uh, develop the character further. So are you also directing these scenes? Um, I'm doing I'm doing the blocking. So yes, I, I do the blocking and I work with the characterizations and the development of characters. Um, I also uh, help with the overall vision of the show too, working with the art teacher on um, getting the students involved in developing, uh, you know, our grotto and our land scenes and all of those things, as well as um, Larry Ansel. He does the building. He's our tech guy. So um, really, it's all hands on deck. We all work together to bring this magic to life. Wow, you are you're really doing a lot, yes. but you you seem to have it on lock. <laughs> yeah, you. absolutely. Thank you. thank you so much for your time. Of course, thank you for coming. I'm here at Con Area Catholic School. We are interviewing for their 2019 production of The Lion King Jr. Here I have with me Rebecca Lachlan. So Rebecca, you are the director and the music director. Tell me about that. What are your responsibilities? 
Um, it's a lot to do. It really is. It's a lot. It's a really good time, though. But um, I'm in charge of this wonderful cast of kids. We have 27 kids, and so I have to teach them their music, their blocking. Um, we work with them on their lines and their characters, and it's just it's a good time. So these kids are so young. It's third through sixth grade. Yeah. So. What is the process in getting them to actually learn the music and memorize their lines? Well, we start um, nice and early. So we start at the beginning of November, um, and the show is March 9th and 10th, so it gives us enough time to kind of work with them and work slowly, so we kind of build on everything we learn. So we start at the beginning just teaching uh, the basics, and we just build on it through the months. So, so I'm a music person. Yes. I, I know how difficult that is to teach kids music, especially these little ones. There's a lot of harmonies and, and a lot of parts involved. So what's it like breaking it up and teaching them all of that? Um, I usually just take it piece by piece with them. I do a lot of like rhythm exercises with them. So I do, I'll have them, you know, count with the rhythms and I do a lot of snapping my fingers and we just really take it um, section by section. I do a lot of games with them too. So we kind of just work with um, just the basics and build up on it. So when can we see the show and how do we go about getting tickets? It, the show is on March 9th and 10th and uh, the show is actually free of charge. So we just ask um, that people would bring non-perishable food items uh, to donate, and it's free of charge because of generous donors and because uh, we've received a grant from the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. So, yeah. Thank you very much. I am here with two of our student stage crew captains. Guys, why don't you tell me who you are, what grade you're in? Uh, my name is Jacob. I'm in sixth grade. I'm 12 years old. And uh, it, the important stage crew captain is to keep sure and to make sure that they stop talking so it doesn't disrupt the play, so that their mics, like when they talk, they don't, it doesn't come over the mics, and to make sure everything's organized and to move the sets off and on. And that's just it. Uh, my name's Eli. I'm in sixth grade. I'm 11 years old. And like Jacob said, just to run the show and make sure everything goes right and to make sure everything's in the right spots. and. To know what's going on. So, have you two done this before? Yeah. How many years? Uh, this is my second year. Uh, third? Didn't we start in third grade? Yeah, it's third. our fourth year together, but second year stage crew captains. Very cool. So, do you guys get to wear like that cool headset and hear everything that's going on? Yeah. Tell me about that. What's that like? Uh, it, it's it's neat. You get to hear what everything's going on, the, like what they're saying, what uh, to be quiet or to tell them to be quiet, or if it's coming over the mic or uh, the speakers, and what to do like with that. So, are you guys also in the show as well? No, no. We're just stage crew captains. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I am here with the leads of the 2019 production of Lion King Jr. here at Con Area Catholic. All right, there's a bunch of you. I'm gonna go one by one. I wanna know your names, what grade you're in, and what role you're playing. We ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm Gianna Halonich, I'm in sixth grade, and I'm playing Pumbaa. I am Sophia Albert, and I am in sixth grade, and I am playing Timon. I am Zach Brooks, I'm in fifth grade, and I'm playing Simba. I am Christian Dennison, I am in sixth grade, and I'm playing Scar. My name is Addison Bandemer. I'm in fifth grade and I'm playing young Simba. My name's Zach Ewing. I'm in sixth grade and I'm playing Bonsai. My name's Isaac Callis and I'm in sixth grade and I'm playing Mufasa. My name is Layla Gary. I'm in sixth grade and I'm playing Zazu. Bonsai, you said? I don't know that character. Tell me about your character. Uh, he's, a, he's one of the main hyenas. So you're one of the bad guys. You're a bad guy, and Christian, you're a bad guy too. You two, tell me what it's like being the villain. How's that been? Uh, well, it feels, I don't know how to explain it. Is it fun? Yeah. Yeah? Because you're not actually a bad guy in real life, right? Nope. So it's fun. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think that's pretty fun because you get to do like mostly all the fun stuff. You get to like beat up people and things. <laughs> and we don't get to do that in real life. So, <laughs> yeah. So, young Simba, you're pretty important. You sing a lot. You do a lot in this show, don't you? Tell me about that. How's it been memorizing everything? 
It's it's a lot of work. You have to practice a lot, but it's really fun. Do you have everything memorized yet? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice. And so you, you're Mufasa. You're Simba's dad. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. So tell me about that. Tell me a little bit about your character and what happens. Well, um, he's, like, he's the king, yeah, but, like, he... He's strict, and, um, well, eventually I die, because, but I don't, yeah, I'm really not in the whole act, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I eventually die, and. You were set up, weren't you? you Didn't Scar set you up? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're so mean. So, mm -hmm. you, you help out Simba, right? Tell me about that. Are you, like, one of his guides, kind of? Yeah, I, like, help the king and watch over, like, Nala and Simba and make sure they don't get into trouble. Okay. And I, like, help them. Yeah, all right. Now we've got you two. You two are, like, Simba's companions? His uncles. You're his uncles? Okay, tell me about this. And Don't you guys have, like, a really fun song that you get to sing? Yeah, I to sing three songs. Okay, well, tell me about that. Okay, so during um, Hakuna Matata, that's when we meet um, him, and we're telling him about our life, and about how we eat slugs, <laughs> and how we're like best friends. The cool thing is that we're best friends in real life. This is kind of cool. And then he goes to that guy, that man right there, um, and then when we, he meets Nala, it's about... I start singing, and he doesn't know what's going on right now. So I start singing about what ha what's going on right now. He's they're falling in love, and they w they never knew it since they were kids. Cause in the play they say, "Yo, she can't be my she can't be my wife. She's my friend." Thanks a lot, Zazu. <laughs> and Dorian, who I can't say it, <laughs> Lua Hawaiian tree. Um, we're being <laughs> we're trying to distract them so Simba can get his kingdom back. So you guys are kind of the mastermind behind Simba becoming king again. I ride on her back a lot. That's the problem. <laughs> your character. Tell me about your character. Come here. Come a little closer. So, so tell me about how your character here. So my character at the beginning, young Simba runs away, and then as the older Simba, I come in at Hakuna Matata, and then I'm, and then Rafik you know, Nala finds me. And then Rafiki comes, and they try to persuade me to come back, and then I come back, and then, yeah. and then I, and then I fight Scar and become king. Awesome! Well, guys, this sounds pretty cool. From what I've seen, it's going to be a great show. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. I am here with the choreographer for Connery Catholic's 2019 production of The Lion King Jr. Tell me who you are. Hi, I'm Kelly Wilson. I am from West Newton, and I also work with Miss Rebecca at the Geyer Theater. Uh, okay, so you're obviously a volunteer. You're here volunteering your time. It's amazing. It's wonderful. So have you choreographed shows before? I have choreographed shows before. I usually do them at the Geyer, or I've done them for different school districts. Um, this is my first time here at Con Area, and I'm loving it because these wonderful kids are just fantabulous to see. So these kids are pretty young. Yes. And this is a lot of work for them and for you. What is the process of like teaching them these big numbers? Well, we started out by doing some games across the floor where they didn't realize they were learning dance moves. So they were having a lot of fun. And then once we put them into the moves, they, into the dances, they already knew the moves. So it just flowed very easily. Um, it's also fun watching them go from not understanding how a song um, needs to be felt, um, what kind of emotions needs to be in it, and then have them sit down and talk through it and then actually understand what the emotion is supposed to be and just put out a fabulous product. It looks beautiful. It's oh, really great. From what I've seen, it looks amazing. They're doing a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job. Um, so... The dance moves, they're supposed to kind of act like they're animals. I'm sure that was pretty funny for them at the beginning. How has that process been? They are wonderful. The first one of the games we played, they had to be animals and just do different things across the floor and act crazy. I had to have them do all the different movements, have the different sound effects, and then just said, you have to be this place at all times. So anytime you get onto the floor, you need to act like your animal. And they've been doing a wonderful job doing that. So how many more numbers do you have left to put together? 
We still have about four more numbers that we have to put together in the finale. Um, they're doing very well with putting everything in, though. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.